Hello and welcome back to Dental Show. Today I'll be taking you along with me for the first day back at uni. We jump straight into clinics so I'll be showing you around and taking you around with me for the day. So I'm just getting ready right now. I had my vitamins, got into my clothes and stuff like that. This video was actually filmed quite a while ago on the first day. But I've just not had the time to be honest to edit it and get it out. But it's okay, it's up now. Um, I'm just packing my bag now and I thought I'd show you what I take with me. I go through exactly what's in my bag, including like what textbooks I take around with me, as well as how I organize my clinical notes and everything in a video coming up. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that video. Um, but yeah, so I actually just unpacked and got to my accommodation about two days before my first day so it was a bit of a mad rush to get everything in place and also to like kind of meet up with everyone that's coming back from their break one thing that like if you're looking to go into dental school that you should know is that we usually are at university for a lot longer than other courses so we start uni at least a week earlier and um yeah and we don't get things like reading weeks but that's okay so we have kind of a uniform for clinical placement that's usually black pants with black shoes um, and then a black top as well and then we'll have scrubs on top of this. So I got my trousers from ASOS, my top from Zara, my shoes from Clarks, even though I didn't show my shoes. <laughs> I think it's like really important to get really comfortable shoes because you're literally in them all day, multiple days a week. But yeah, so I'm just walking to uni now. I'll show you a little bit about the clinic as well. This is us setting up for a filling and explain a little bit what happened later with my patient. But oh my God, um, usually you can kind of count on the first week back to be pretty chill. So we have phantom head reintegration, which basically means like we use these fake heads to kind of practice using the drill again. But yeah, and you know, if you do see patients, you can kind of count on them to be basic exams, which you like treatment plan from and stuff like that. But this appointment was anything but. I mean, it's all really good experience and stuff, but I'll explain a little bit later what happened. <laughs> okay, so I'm back now. My voice is going, but um, I just had the most crazy appointment ever. Um, I'm having lunch, so I'm going to have to hurry because I don't have that much time left. But basically, I had a patient who was just like a new patient assessment, so, you know, you take them through all the normal stuff, you check their medical history, you check their charting, you check um, all of the stuff and like create a treatment plan from that and figure out what they need, what kind of phases they need and stuff like that. But um, it was supposed to just be like a very chill sesh, um, patient that I had never seen before. And then turns out she's like, okay, there's a tooth here that basically they weren't able to finish last year. And um, there was a temporary filling, the temporary filling fell out. She had pain, all of that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh my God. Um, then we did all the tests, like sensibility testing, we took some radiographs and then the supervisor was like, yeah, okay, now you have to quickly put in an amalgam. So I had to take out all the temporary filling, take out all any decay or caries. Then I had to make sure that the prep had like enough undercut so it was the right shape so that there wouldn't be any fractures in the future and stuff like that. Packing the amalgam, um, it was just a crazy um, appointment, especially because the patient would not go numb. So we did two ID blocks and she said that the last time she came in that, that she had two ID blocks and that she wasn't, um, like they just sent her home. But then basically um, we did articane and then we did an infiltration straight into the tooth, it was lower left six. And that was like a buckle infiltration, which is like a shorter needle and you go into like the buckle fold. But yeah, basically it was just crazy. I learned a lot. Um, there's also like two like kind of exams that we have which is um, like they're based on like patients. So you have to try and get like an extraction, which is grade one mobile. You have to get um, endodontic access and temporization, like a load of them for fourth year. And each year you have different ones. So this year I got to get my, um, so this appointment, I got my emergency one done, which basically means that you have to like see a patient that's in pain. Um, and then you have to give def differential diagnoses, you go through like all the like special investigations and like sensibility testing and stuff like that, which was really sick. Um, I wasn't expecting to get that done. And like these things, they kind of just depend on what patients you get because you get randomly allocated a um, patient case notes every year. So that was really amazing. Um, and I also got my caries removal and restoration one, which basically, it basically has to be like a DO or a MO or something like that. It has to have two surfaces in it. So that was amazing. Um, but yeah, I have only 10 minutes to eat this, so I'm going to hurry up, otherwise I'm going to be late. <laughs> I'm just eating some, like, leftover spicy fried rice, um, but basically in the afternoon I had, um, well I have, um, uh, like basically like phantom heads and stuff like that, so I think we're doing composite build-ups today using, like, a stent, um, on the incisal, um, so we'll, I'll show you, like, photos of that and stuff if I'm able to. Um, I think it'll be like a really helpful session. We do them on like phantom heads, so plastic teeth and stuff like that.
So these are the phantom heads that I was talking about earlier. They actually are really, really useful, especially for things when you've got like a complex patient and you want to stimulate doing crown preps or a composite buildup or something like that, like you'll see me do later on in this video. If you want to practice things like root canals as well, you could also do this with like real lifelike teeth. They have like actual root canals and pulps and stuff, so it's really good to practice on. So here you can see me put on these things called rubber dams. They are basically like the gold standard. And whenever you do things like root canals, you have to irrigate the socket. So having a rubber dam is like really, really essential, especially because you might end up bleaching the patient otherwise or have them ingest bleach and stuff like that. It's also helpful for other things. So like when you're doing a composite filling, you have to make sure that there's no moisture. So things like saliva, the tongue, everything else, it's like taken out of the equation. It's really simple and I'll show you how it looks in a second. We had like three and a half hours. So I just worked my way through things that I thought I could practice. So I started with crown preps, which basically look like this. And you basically prep the margins of a tooth and you're essentially placing a cap over the top of the tooth so it helps protect an extended life of a tooth and it also provides like function to a tooth that might have been broken down like a bunch of other things um, and then I also use the putty stent to work on some composite buildups which basically for example if a patient was grinding their teeth or they fractured a tooth well you can use this filling material called composite to build them back up it's actually really really satisfying and it's not that easy when you start practicing, but once you get the hang of it, it gets easier. Um, but doing it on a patient is a completely different game. Um, you definitely need to practice for that. But yeah, I'm just drilling away, doing some other kind of treatment. And finally, we are going home. I feel like this year, I really want to set more boundaries. And like once I come back from clinic, apart from studying, I don't really want to think about dentistry for the rest of my day. It's really easy to like stress out about exams and essays coming up, but you kind of just have to trust that you'll get through it all. Here we're having some Wagamamas. My favorite dish is duck dunbury, for sure. I also really like the chili squid and the my new favorite has been tamar squid recently. Um, but yeah, peach iced tea. Not that anyone asks, but these are the best dishes to order on the menu you can literally find me on this <laughs> we ended up going to the cinemas afterwards and watching that new marvel movie it was actually really good and i really like the graphics and obviously the guy from mr kim's convenience was in there so you know i had to watch it <laughs> And well, I mean, as much as I talk about boundaries and stuff like that, here I am working a little late into the night. I really think that how you start your year is maybe more important than how you study leading up to exams. You really want to start the year strong and maintain that study habit. Cramming never really works. And even if you start one month before exams, you can kind of have a structure of how you're going to study, what the gaps in your knowledge are, and, you know, keep on top of your lectures and stuff like that. I feel like clinics is one of those things that you kind of have limited exposure on and chances to see patients. So I'm I'm in clinic on three days a week and I really want to make the most out of these sessions and appointments. So here you can see I'm just going through like the different clinical exams, looking at the criteria, looking at my targets, um, not just for this year as well, but also for next year because we're allowed to complete clinical exams in advance. It's kind of like um, if you have the patient for a root canal, you kind of do that kind of um exam but it's not only just going through the criteria and stuff like that I also have like these step-by-step -step guides that I created for myself kind of on how to complete each type of treatment what equipment I need you know the different antibiotics I can prescribe and stuff like that so if I ever come across a emergency like I did today I'll be prepared with like all the cavity prep sizes and stuff like that um I will be going through this in a how I organize my clinical notes video coming up really soon so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on that video but yeah I'm really grateful that you guys have stayed till the end um make sure you check out all the other videos on my channel I have tons of videos helping you get into dental school videos on life as a dental student like this one and productivity tips and stuff like that so if you're interested in them subscribe and check out the other videos on my channel also comment down below because I reply to every single one and if there's anything in specific you want to see or questions you have literally i'll reply um and yeah i will see you in the next one bye